Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Time for another bird. And today we have this as our model. This is a, I don't know where this came from, kind of bird. Um, have a feeling that somebody gave it to me. I'm pretty sure they did, because I know I didn't buy it. It's kind of metal and it's sort of enameled. And um, we thought he would make quite an interesting starting point, a sort of uh, model for today's bird. So um, we've also been invaded by crows. I don't know if it's because we're painting a bird a day or what, but we have probably got a thousand crows trying to nest in our oak tree all of a sudden, and they are making one hell of a racket. So just watch out. If you're painting a bird a day, you might get invaded by the birds. Now, most of the birds that we've done just recently have been sort of based on a circle. And today, because we're doing this one, the noise you can hear in the background is the cats playing. Um, we're going to base it on a, a semicircle, a half circle, a watermelon smile like the chickens we did the other day. So we just draw a semicircle like that. And if you're not very sure about that, find something round, draw around it and cut the bottom, cut, cut it off halfway. And that's your, that's your basis for the body of the bird. And then the head is going to be another sort of small semicircle here with a beak coming out the front like that and then the eye there and you can make the proportions however you want so you might adjust that a little bit then we're going to put a nice floofy tail on the end ditto the wing and then maybe a wing or two at the back and then um, for legs we're just going to do two matchstick legs here with a couple of toes and another leg here the same thing going on and then just as the decorative item we will put here a flower and up here as usual why not a butterfly like that Okay, and we'll colour all that in and we're standing on some ground. And this is a great one to do with children, I think. I'm using um, this familiar palette that we've been using recently here, which has got a um, little blob of turquoise blue here. Um, this is ultramarine, quinacridone gold, Windsor violet and permanent rose. So I'm just going to, this is watercolour, it's not gouache, but I'm going to paint it fairly thickly past Kerr because um, my, the paper I'm using is hot press paper and it doesn't like a lot of water. It likes thick paint, so you can do it obviously whichever way you prefer, um, but I'm going to have to paint it as if I was a kid at school and there's something to be said for that. We just had a visit from um, a neighbour who brings us hay for the sheep from time to time and he's he's getting on like all of us in years and uh, he was bemoaning the fact that he never really learnt to play the piano when he, I think he must have been watching Pride and Prejudice. If he had learnt then he would have been quite good, you know, that kind of Jane Austen sort of uh, humour, I don't know. If anyone knows what I'm talking about. But <laughs> anyway, it's always a case of going back down through memory lane when Graham pops round. And that was where we were today, bemoaning the fact that, first of all, when you go to a dance nowadays, you don't ask the girl to dance. You just get up and find a partner on the floor. Didn't know about that. I said, that's the last time I went to a dance. Must have been about 1976. <clears throat> so I'm probably quite a long way out of date. Anyway, um, yeah, it's always interesting having a chat with him, sort of. <laughs> so I'm just colouring this in, thinking about primary school. I used to teach 10-year-olds, and this would have been quite the thing to do something like this with them. They would have enjoyed this. So any of you, if you've got kids that... Um, come round every now and again to visit grandma or great grandma or auntie. This is a surefire winner, I would say. So 
what we've got here is turquoise, then um, ultramarine, then Windsor, uh, violet or purple, something like that. If you've got gouache, that would work very well too. And I'm going to paint all the wing feathers, or the wings rather, in the same pink. And I'm going to let it bleed a little bit because that just gives it a little bit more interest. It turns it from being a complete um, colouring book type of effort to being something a little bit more artistic. And the embellishment will be the thing when we come round to doing the embellishing. I hope. Maybe not. I've probably put a little bit too much blue there. I might just uh, dab some of that up. And uh, I'm going to wait for that to dry and I will alter that a little bit. Meanwhile, let's do their legs. The other thing I've been doing last couple of days is uh, starting to learn how to do um, Zentangle, which is quite interesting. Turns out that some of these embellishment things I've been doing on some of these birds actually have something in common with Zentangle. Uh, but uh, I didn't realise that. Oh, I'm going to um, pick up a pen. These microns are pretty good. This is a point two. And we'll draw the, the butterfly. Give him some nice squirrely antennae, like that. You can just let your imagination or whatever comes out the end of your pen happen. So we we'll put the stem for the flower, a couple of nice leaves, and then a nice six petaled flower there. <coughs> and paint this very casually. What shall we use? Nice dark pink, perhaps, for that to match the feathers on the bird. There we are. And perhaps we'll make the leaves turquoise because we don't really want to introduce green, not green per se, do we? Because that would be a bit jarring when the bird is that colour. Okay, and maybe we'll do the butterfly in just pale pink like that. Now I'm just going to quickly dry that. Okay. I've added a little bit of white to the pink because I made a mistake there, but I think it's probably just as well to share the mistake with you so that you know that if you make a mistake, because we all do all the time, you can just correct it. And that's the great thing about gouache. So what we've got now is we've got a, a slightly lighter colour pink than I had intended. So I'll just go over the other pink ones as well because that's made it opaque. So that's fine. And now we'll just let that dry. And uh, oh, while I've got that pink, I'm going to just add some stronger pink to the butterfly. And a little pink centre there for the flower. There we go. Okay. And we put the eye of the bird in. Okay, so that's nice and dry now. And we're going to carry on now with a bit of embellishment. Now, as I said, this is our model, and I'm going to try to copy some of the elements that are on this. 
I can see there's a flower here, there's some circles, some leaves, and lots of overlapping scales, like fish scales, which I think are supposed to represent the feathers. So we're going to use some of those elements in our bird here, who is um, obviously belongs to the same family. So we'll start off by putting gold. I'm using a, um, a gold pen. This is a hybrid, hybrid gel grip by, I don't know who, it doesn't really say, but anyway, so that's what that is. And then we're going to put some gold on the beak on top of the orange that I used. That gives a nice sort of bronzy color. And then um, I think I'll start with the wing and we'll just do overlapping fish scales like that for a few rows. And then our model has got longer ones then coming next, like that. And then another row. I think it's a really nice idea to paint a few of these in a sketchbook ahead of time and then sit down in the evening with your pens, because sometimes you don't necessarily want paint on your lap when you're in the, in the sitting room, do you? But you want to do something with your hands to keep your brain busy. So if you draw some of these, paint some of these ahead of time, let them all dry, and then in the evening you can just spend some quality time with yourself filling in the embellishment, like when people do Zentangle which is my latest fad, a bit like Toad really, get all excited about things. Try not to drop them though after we've found out the best bits. Okay, we're on number two of the tail feathers now. And there's some longer ones. There we are. Um, sometimes you just have to turn these things round a little bit so that you can do the get the angle right. There we are. So that's that. Now what else have we got here? We have got a few smaller. overlapping C's here, and that goes round his head, like that, and then we've got some bigger ones. I'm very poor on the imagination front, so that when I can find something like this that gives me some inspiration, I'm pretty good at copying, but I'm rubbish at inventing. Now he has a band across his front there for some reason. And I think we need to draw around his wing like that. Now on my model, there's a flower on the top and obviously I don't have enough room for that. So I think I might put it here. So it's just a five petaled flower like that with um, four leaves. So one, two, three, four. And then we carry on with our little scoopy things. Maybe we put another one down here. One, two, three, four, five. And then a leaf, a leaf, a leaf, a leaf and a leaf. And then we 
we have, we could have another band here, like that, couldn't we? And perhaps some circles. And then a spiral. The spirals are very satisfying. They have a sort of very, um, I think they have quite a spiritual sort of meaning to them, don't they? A spiral like that. It's a bit like a Reiki symbol, I think. There we are. So now we'll just put some scales on his legs in gold and give him some golden feet. And then I was hesitating about what to have him standing on, but now it seems obvious that he's got to be standing on a golden line. And not to forget the butterfly who obviously needs a few golden embellishments on top of her black lines there. I quite like the gold on top of the black. It gives a sort of antique, kind of distressed look. I think that's quite good. So there we are. I am tempted to put squirrely things on tops of his head and so on, but I'm not going to. I am not going to do that because I think it would spoil it. But I will give the flower some gold. Gold centre, gold vein for the leaves. And then I think we're done. So there's our original model and there's our little painted version. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll let you go now, and I'll see you again soon for another bird. Don't forget, hashtag paint a bird a day. It's all over social media. It's absolutely the latest craze, just like Zentangle. So I'll see you again soon, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.